You're here at ClosureConj, so I'm pretty sure I'm preaching to the choir with this whole talk. Developers aren't paid to code. They're just paid to solve problems. So that's it. You can go home. Um, I'm Wesley Matson. I work at Remix AI, which is a social generative AI artwork application. Uh, you can find it on uh, at remix.ai if you want to. Most of the images in here were created using Stable Diffusion or Flux, uh, which are both just Gen AI models. Don't worry about it. They're going to look a little funky, but uh, they have no important copyrights to be worried about. So you know they're really good for presentations that way. Um, And speaking of AI, we kind of are living in this golden age of engineering. We don't have to deal with manual memory management anymore. We don't have to deal with all sorts of just plumbing in the way that we used to. Like, I don't know about the rest of you, but five years ago, pretty much all I did was getting data from point A to point B. And LLMs are actually getting pretty good at just figuring it out, especially when it's in a single file. Um, if you went to the unsession yesterday, we talked a lot more about that, and I'm not going to get too deep into it. But I'm really interested in this space of programming is so much less of the work than it used to be. Even starting into Clojure, my time spent developing was dominated by my thinking time all of a sudden instead of my typing time. Um, could just be a matter of where I was in my career at the time, but I, I like to think it's more about building on better abstractions and all of the usual stuff. So what really does make a developer valuable? This problem solving. There's something to it. And there are qualities that you can bring about in yourself that will work better for your company. One of the big ones is just understanding what your company does. Thinking about the overall system, and apparently my dark reader broke this. There we go. Um, diagram was generated by AI, so just ignore that the arrows are a little messed up. When you know which parts of your system are a little bit broken, it helps a lot when you're working on things that seem unrelated and may affect that. Just knowing how your system's put together is really important and knowing what actually affects the business. So I really encourage everyone to go talk to your analysts, subject matter experts, whatever they are, and work with them. Similar to how the guy with the criminal defense talk earlier was talking about how he's really just solving problems but using his coding as leverage only and really working with his team more directly. Sometimes the right solution to a problem is not technical. Sometimes it's a process change. Sometimes you just need to put a literal piece of paper next to the meeting room and have people sign up. Works better than what Outlook usually does. Now in this remote world, obviously a lot of things will be more technical. But the whole point of Agile was allowing your teams to make their own processes that work well for them. The rest of it is just kind of structure to get you started. When you're communicating with your team, there are a lot of things you can do that will improve the whole situation. A lot of it is actually taking the time to think about what it is they're trying to communicate to you, all of that usual stuff, and making sure that you're thinking about the same world and the like. But one thing that a lot of people miss is you just need to ask dumb questions. The number of, com of conversations that have been short-circuited by just asking the right dumb question is there's just so many of them. <laughs> I'm going to double check my speaker notes real quick. All right. Yeah, and also just say that you don't know things when you don't know things. It's really important. One thing that you'll see as a mark of most of your really great senior engineers and the like is that they also know how to do just enough UX design to get by and just enough product owning to distill the, the tickets into something that will work well for your juniors and just enough of every other part of the process and of the business. You should be able to jump in there in the trenches for at least the small things and you should be able to cover for almost anyone at the company at least in the terms of they're on vacation and I need to do things that can't wait until tomorrow. 
One of the things that you can use to build all of these other skills, as I've kind of hinted at, is just actually firefighting the things that happen in production. Use that time on call to learn, to know what your system's bad at, to know what's frustrating for your users and for your team, and for the other teams at your company if you're large enough for that. Would you rather, or sorry, and you can do a lot of this firefighting up front before it even becomes a fire. Would you rather be the guy on the left looking through a spaghettified mess and not knowing exactly what went wrong, or the guy on the right with a nice, simple, unbraided solution? It's much easier to firefight when everything that you have in your system is observable and untangled from everything else. Now, there are full talks that have been done on this, so I'm not going to go terribly deep into it. Uh, so this, this is actually a hyperlink here, and I'll provide the slides on the Discord. And I think I've run through this a little faster than I intended to, but I'm OK with that. Wouldn't be a closure conference without some word definitions. And I really love this one that uh, the LLMs came up with. Devs aren't paid to code. They're paid to devise. Uh, I have some extra time, so I can answer some questions if you want.